This video gives the derivatives of sine, cosine, and other trig functions. A graph of the function y equals sine x is given in blue here. We can estimate the shape of the derivative of sine x by looking at the slopes of the tangent lines. Here, when x equals 0, the tangent line has a positive slope of approximately 1. As x increases to pi over 2, the slope of the tangent line is still positive but decreases to zero. Next, the slope turns negative, more and more negative, reaching a negative value of negative one before returning again to zero. Continuing like this, we see that the graph of the derivative, y equals sine prime of x, looks like the graph of y equals cosine x below. Please pause the video and do a similar exercise for the graph of y equals cosine of x below. That is, use the graph of y equals cosine x to estimate the shape of the graph of y equals cosine prime of x. Notice that when x equals zero, the slope of the tangent line here is zero. That slope turns negative and then reaches zero again before turning positive. So the graph of the derivative should look something like this. This new blue graph looks like the vertical reflection of the blue graph above, suggesting that the derivative of cosine of x is equal to the negative of sine of x. So we have graphical evidence that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. For proofs of these facts, please see the separate proof video for this section. Once we have the derivatives of sine and cosine, we have the power to compute the derivatives of a lot of other trig functions as well. And notice that a nice way to remember which of these answers have negative signs in them is that the derivatives of the trig functions that start with a co always have a negative, and the derivative of the trig functions that don't have the co are positive. Now let's use these formulas in an example. g of x is a complicated expression involving several trig functions as well as a constant m. And I have a couple choices of how to proceed. I could try to rewrite all my trig functions in terms of sine and cosine and simplify, or I could attack the derivative directly using the quotient rule. I'm going to use the direct approach 
in this case, but sometimes you'll find that rewriting will make things easier. So using the quotient rule, on the denominator I get the original denominator squared. On the numerator I get low d high. To compute the derivative of x cosine x I need the product rule. So I get x times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x, plus the derivative of x, which is just 1, times cosine of x. Now I have to do minus high x cosine of x d low. The derivative of m is just 0, because m is a constant, plus the derivative of cotangent, which is negative cosecant squared of x. So I found the derivative. I'm going to go ahead and simplify it a little bit by multiplying out, then rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine, and then multiplying the numerator and denominator by sine squared of x. We have a somewhat simplified expression for the derivative. You should memorize the derivatives of the trig functions. We'll prove that the first two formulas are correct in a separate proof video.